Hey everyone, this is Edwin and today we are back in the studio for a new video. So I got this question pretty often, how do you get your drums to sound fat? So today I'm going to show you what is my way to mix drums and what plugins can really make this process faster. In this video I will first show you how to mix your drums using FL Studio stock plugins and then I will show you how to mix your drums using another plugin that I really like. It's called Beatformer, it's made by Aqsonus. It's a plugin that allows you to shape and mix your drums with only a few knobs and I think it's a great plugin to make your drums sound fat and punchy in a few easy steps when compared to other more complicated plugins. If you want to try Beatformer make sure to check it out at the link in the description below there is a download link right there. So in this video I'm going to improve the track of one of our patrons. So let's listen to the drop as I received it from Electro Party Nation. It's a nice progressive house track with great vibes, but as you can hear, there are a few things to change in here. For each of these steps, I'm going to use first FL Studio native plugins to show you how you can do all of this without using any third-party plugins. And then I'm going to show you how to do this using Beatformer. So Beatformer focuses on quickly adjusting four different characteristics of a beat sound. First of all, we have the boom knob, which allows you to increase or decrease the low end of your sound. The boom knob can also be used on your bass or on any low end instrument. Then we have the punch knob. So with this knob, you're going to be able to say, yeah, this drum is too present in the mix. I don't want to lower it completely. I just want to lower the transients. So it's going to decrease a bit the, the presence of your drums. Next up we have the air knob to increase the high end of your sound or decrease it. Basically it's a harmonic exciter and you can choose at which frequency this harmonic exciter is going to act. Finally we have the squash knob which is basically a compressor. It allows you to quickly adjust if you want your overall drum sounds to sound more squashed, compressed, more upfront or if you want to give some air to the mix. So I will solo the kick and the bass, that's the foundation of your whole track. So you want to make sure that the kick and the bass are interacting in a good way, in a groovy way. The kick and the sub do not interact so well together. Let's have a listen of the kick and the sub only. So the sub takes a lot of space since it's a progressive house track. The kick should be tighter, it shouldn't have too much boominess. So let's first use FL Studio plugins. First of all, you can use a Fruity Transient Processor, which allows you to reduce the length of your sample. It also allows you to increase or decrease the loudness of the transients of the kick. It has a drive button to add some harmonics and a gain button to adjust the overall volume. So first of all, let's make the release of the kick shorter. Next step is to remove some of the low end on this kick drum so that it doesn't clash with the um, sub. So I'm going to put a high pass. Now let's listen to the whole drop with the modified kick. So it sounds much better now. Kick bass groove is better. Nice. Now I'm going to do the same using Beatformer. So in our case, I want to increase it a little bit just to get this click really present in the drop. And I will decrease the overall volume so that the low end will also decrease at the same time. So... Now let's compare how it sounds with the FL Studio plugins and with the Beatformer plugins. So I adjusted the volume of both plugins so that we get the same volume and we don't get biased by a higher volume. First, the FL Studio plugins. With the Beatformer plugin. Now 
So in my opinion, the FL Studio plugins work just fine for this, except they don't sound as transparent as the Bitformer plugin. Bitformer has a bit more transparency and it sounds a bit clearer, especially in the high end. If you listen, you can rewind the video a few seconds back just to compare again if you want and tell me in the comments down below what you think about both solutions. Nice. And now let's listen to the drop with all the instruments turned on with the FL Studio plugins and then with the Bitformer. Nice. Now let me show you how I would mix these claps sound. We have this sound. doesn't sound bad but we can improve it pretty easily first of all using the FL Studio native plugins I will remove the low end from the claps up to let's say 500 as we don't need any low end on the claps now I'm going to load the fruity limiter and I will set it to compressor mode lower the threshold increase the ratio What I'm doing here is keeping some attack so that not the whole clap is compressed but only the part after 26 milliseconds. So the first the first part of the, the beginning of the clap is going to be untouched by the compressor but the rest of the clap is going to be heavily squashed. So for this step, you can use a ratio of around three and above, I would say. Don't use a limiter, don't use a ratio of 100 or 20. Just use like between three and five is fine for claps. I will use another EQ just to increase volume afterwards. Also just want to remove the very high end from these claps as they could interfere with the hi-hats. So as you can hear, the transients of the claps are way too long when we don't apply any compression on top of them. So we want to add some compression, we want to control the volume that happens right after the transients, we want to lower this volume and that's what we just did now with these FL Studio plugins. Now I'm going to do the same using Bitformer. So first of all, I want to increase these transients on the claps. Next up, I want to add some air on these claps. Finally, I want to compress them a little bit more. So now let's compare um, the mixing I've done using FL Studio Native Plugins and Bitformer. So here we go, FL Studio Native Plugins at the same volume. So again, tell me in the comments down below if you prefer the mixing I've done using FL Studio native plugins or if you prefer the sound that comes out when I'm mixing with Beatformer. I think it's pretty interesting because using Beatformer we have kind of a wider sound, strangely, I don't know why. It seems like uh, it's also increasing slightly the, the width of the sound, maybe with the air button. Next step, mixing the hi-hats. Uh, we have this hi-hat sound. So I'm going to mix these with my FL Studio native plugins. So first of all, I'm going to put a high pass, pretty high, like at 700, 900, 900. Just to make sure we don't have any low end on the hi hats. Increase a little bit the high end. Make sure they cut through the mix. Next up, I'm going to use a fruity limiter with the compressor mode on and put a lower threshold in the ratio around two to three. And I'm going to use FL Studio's transient processor to just increase a little bit the um, transients of our hi-hats. And also make the hi-hats 
a little bit more present. You may have noticed I have reduced a little bit of the 2 to 3K because there is already a lot going on in this frequency range uh, with the lead sounds and I don't want the hi-hats to clash with the leads. Now let me try to do the same mixing using only a bit former. So here I want to decrease a little bit the punch knob. I want to increase the air knob a little bit just to give it some more high end high frequencies. And compress the hi hats a little bit using the squash button. Now a comparison between FL Studio native plugins and what I can do using Beatformer. And using Beatformer. Also something that I've noticed with this plugin called Beatformer is uh, you can also replace it on instrument bus. It doesn't only work with drum buses. So for example here I'm using it on the bass. I can I will show you how it sounds uh, on the bass. So now I'm removing these three FL Studio plugins. I'm just keeping the gross beats for the sidechain. And now doing uh, my mixing using Beatformer. So now doing my tweaking stuff using Beatformer. It's also going to so you can use it as a compressor with the squash button and remove some of the air What I like to do with Beatformer is to use it on a whole drum bus and to use it as a way to glue all the drums together. So I'm going to show you how I'm doing this. So I'm creating a drum bus and I'm going to root to my kick drum and my claps and my hi-hats. So I've, now I've rooted all my drums to this bus and let's hear everything without any plugins. And now let me add some bit former on top of it. So increase a little bit the punch just to add some transients. And most importantly, I want to increase the squash knob, which will compress the whole bus. So here we go. And also increase the air knob just to add some harmonics in the high end of the spectrum. So it sounds a bit more crisp. So let's have a comparison with and without Beatformer. So without Beatformer. With Beatformer. The whole drum bass sounds a bit more defined, clear, crisp, and it's a subtle effect, but I like to use this on my drum bass. So that's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you didn't yet. Of course, you can get the FL Studio project at the link in the description below. So in the end, I think um, you can achieve a good sound with both FL Studio native plugins and Beatformer. So what is good with FL Studio native plugins is that you can tweak more the sound. You can go more in depth with your uh, drum mixing. Uh, what I don't like with FL Studio native plugins is, is that they are not as much transparent as with Beatformer, for example. Also, sometimes when I'm mixing, I don't have to have too many choices. I like to have a tool 
feel that just does what I need. I don't need to tweak too much. So that's an advantage of Beatformer for beginner producers, but also for professionals who need to shape their drums in a quick way, clean way, transparent way. So for these reasons, I think uh, that Beatformer is a great plugin. I encourage you guys to check it out at the link in the description below. Also guys, let me know in the comments down below, what's your favorite way to mix drums? Did I miss some important points? Do you want me to go more in depth with drums mixing? Let me know if you already tried Beatformer, if you prefer FL Studio native plugins. Let's have a little discussion in the comments down below. See you in the next video. Have fun producing. And of course, and of course, don't forget to pray to FL Studio God.